turn of the 20th century, rival companies merged to become huge corporations called monopolies, or trusts. They took over industries such as oil, sugar, and even matches. Tell the mirror. Uh, would you mind running that bias again in English? Theodore Roosevelt could arguably be the finest president this country has ever seen. No president has been able to leave a greater legacy. He was the model who shaped the criteria of what a real president should be, as well as set the tone for all generations after. He's remembered today by quotes like, speak softly and carry a big stick. Also, he is idealized by hunting and eliminating monopolies through the Anti-Sherman Trust Act, passed in 1890. He also had the most ex expressed personality in the media. In fact, Teddy began this persona of the president next door in office. He often did not go away without a photograph. He gave birth to a president living in the public eye. Although perceived as very delightful, he also could be argued a determined war hero. This is exactly how he shaped presidency to also be seen as not just a man who's a warrior, but a relatable man who we can trust to run our country aggressively but remains a gentleman. With qualities like ambition, aggression, and responsible responsibility, how could he go wrong in the office? Whether shaking 50 hands a minute in Washington or barnstorming across America, Roosevelt radiates the energies which captivate the country. He laughs loudly at his own jokes, plays games with the children while diplomats wait, dismays his guards with an impromptu plunge in a submarine. He has hunted buffalo and grizzly bears, captured robbers, led the Rough Riders on San Juan Hill. Already he has written more than a dozen books on history, nature, and political philosophy. One of them dictated while shaving. He believes, he says, in the strenuous life. Theodore Roosevelt is not only the president of the United States, he is the most entertaining man in America, and the people love him. Theodore shaped our Navy most importantly by his strong presence and influence. He was a celebrated war hero and created the Great White Fleet, which was also known to be the Navy. He believed that us Americans should interfere with all foreign affairs and push to be a huge national power. The time has arrived for this great nation of ours to step out upon the world stage. So let the spotlight fall on us. I am reminded today of the words of George Washington, who said, to be prepared for war is the most effectual means to promote the peace. We ask for a great Navy because no national life is worth having if we are not willing to defend it. All the great masterful races have been fighting races. And to lose the fighting virtues is to lose the right to stand at all. There are higher things in life than the soft enjoyment of material comforts. And it is through strife and the readiness for strife that a man or a nation must win greatness. So let the world know that we are here and willing to pour out our blood, our treasure, our tears, and that America is ready and, if need be, desirous of battle. That is why he enforced expansionism and opposed isolationism. Also, he transformed this Navy into an international force at sea. For example, he used this force to lead into Russo-Japanese War. In fact, to study the aspects of the Navy forces during his days at Harvard. He increased his size, armor, speed, efficiency, and overall capacity of the Navy. As well, he prepped the Navy to begin to push force on the Cubans to kick part, to kick start the Panama Canal. Generally said, Roosevelt as a Navy strate strategist is linked closely to the rise of the U.S. Theodore Roosevelt was the 26th and youngest president of the United States. 
He forever changed what it meant to be president. Theodore Roosevelt was the first truly modern American president. He expanded the power of the presidency dramatically. He used executive orders and presidential proclamations in ways that had never been done before. Roosevelt is also known as a famous man and a courageous one. He was known as a trust buster throughout his times. Mostly he pushed his presidential limits and did not concern himself with what the rich thought as many other presidents in the years before him did. In fact, he frowned upon the rich who thought they could buy representatives and corrupt the government. He passed the Anti-Sherman Act, which limited the amount of money the rich were trying to steal. He enforced and promoted the importance of competition to bring greater things into our country. The Antitrust Act was passed by the Senate with a vote of 51 to 1 on April 8, 1890, and the House by unanimous vote of 242 to 0 on June 20th, 1890. The great fundamental issue now before our people can be stated briefly. It is, are the American people fit to govern themselves, to rule themselves, to control themselves? I believe they are. My opponents do not. I believe in the right of the people to rule. I believe that the majority of the plain people of the United States will, day in and day out, make fewer mistakes in governing themselves than any smaller class or body of men, no matter what their training, will make in trying to govern them. I believe again that the American people are, as a whole, capable of self-control and of learning by their mistakes. Our opponents pay lip loyalty to this doctrine, but they show their real belief by the way in which they champion every device to make the nominal rule of the people a sham. Lastly, Teddy Roosevelt set a legacy to feed America's presidents forever. He brought up a media-centered president and relatable president at that. Also, he taught how to lead with an iron fist and began what we see as a modern president today. Through the Rough Riders, the Navy and Anti-Sherman Trust Act, he has given enough evidence. His legacy and a tough but loving leadership will be followed and admired for many centuries to come. Theodore Roosevelt was hands down one of the best presidents to ever take the office in America. So let the world know that we are here and willing to pour out our blood, our treasure, our tears, and that America is ready and if need be desirous of battle.